The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Good afternoon. So here the question is, you know, we are using recycled material and recycled concrete aggregate is being used in many different parts of the world. Now the question is, how many times we actually can recycle them? So here's the outline. Talk about a little bit about the motivation, the objective of the study. Basically, I'll show you some case studies and then try to answer the question with some results. Finally, conclusion. So the motivation, you know, like in civil infrastructure, particularly in North America, they have been aging. And if you look into U.S. and also in Canada, a substantial portion of infrastructure needs to be demolished because they have passed their service life. And that will generate substantial amount of waste that may have to eventually go to the landfill. And instead of thinking about this as a waste, we should change our mindset and think about this is not a waste, rather this is a good resource of raw materials. Another motivation is, I am talking particularly in Canada, most of the concrete industries are facing challenge to find good quality aggregate at a cheaper cost. In most cases, long hauling is required to bring the aggregates and it increases the cost as well as it's environmentally damaging because of the transportation. And BC, British Columbia province, has a mandate to reduce greenhouse gas emission by 80% compared to what was emitted in 2007 by 2050. So which is, you know, very ambitious goal. And in order to achieve this goal, government and industry sector are trying to look into all different sectors, how they can reduce greenhouse gas emission. Also, in BC, there are many gravel pits and rock quarries for sure. And because of the environmental regulations, people are more looking to the environment now. So that's why they would like to disturb the environment less. So that's why you will also see that there will be less amount of operation into the aggregate size and rock queries. This is another motivation. In BC, particularly the West Coast, this is quite seismically vulnerable. And as many aging infrastructure are there, seismologists predict that there might be a very large earthquake magnitude uh, 9 can hit the west part of Canada. And that could cause a huge amount of potential losses and damages of infrastructure. And you might know that in Chile earthquake and also in Christchurch earthquake, there were billions of dollars lost. There were about $20 billion loss in both countries. And if you look into Christchurch, 70% of the downtown buildings had to be demolished because they experienced substantial amount of damage. They were not at all serviceable. And if you demolish those structures, then what happens is that generates huge amount of waste. And at the same time, when you have to build new infrastructure, which means that there is huge amount of demand coming because in most cases there are concrete structures, they will need raw materials. And from where they are going to get raw materials. So those concrete waste could be a good solution as well. In this particular work, I'll talk about how you can use RCA as a structural concrete and talk about the durability. This particular case study, we have worked with some companies in Kelowna. I think most of you are familiar with recycled aggregate, how they look like. Definitely when you demolish this recycled aggregate, you know, they are very rough textured, very highly angular, whereas natural aggregate is like that. When we work with industry, they wanted to make it very simple. They wanted to see if you are actually replacing, say you have uh, one particular mix that they're using, it's a ready mix company, they wanted to see if you are replacing recycled aggregate with natural aggregate at particular replacement levels, say 30%, 40%, 50%, how they perform in terms of strength, in terms of durability. So we had to make sure that they follow appropriate gradation. And when we did the test, we found out the slump and the air content. And then we had to observe the strength development over time. So these are up to 50% placement. Those are the initial preliminary tests. And we found that for 30%, they almost act like regular concrete. When you go for 50%, you could easily achieve our target strength was 35 MPa. So since we used 20% of fly ash, the strength development was a little slower. But eventually, after 56 days, we could actually achieve the target strength. And after 120 days, you see that they way surpassed the strength that was required. 
And as you are introducing RCA, definitely you have a little bit more porosity. And in terms of modulus of elasticity, it's a little softer than the regular concrete, as you can see here. And you can also see that the poisons ratio is also a little affected because it is a little softer. And then we did the durable test. Obviously, because the industry people, they wanted to introduce this recycle aggregate concrete. They wanted to put it into the ready mix. So they wanted to make sure that in terms of durability and strength, it satisfies all the requirements. So we did the durable test, chloride exposure test. We did freeze thaw test. And everything come out that they are within the limit, so they could easily introduce it. So after proving this concept up to 50%, and also actually we had to do the bond strength test also in order to use it as structural concrete. So these are some results. You can see that when we are plotting the bond strength, normalized strength, with respect to different RC replacement level, we did the test for two different embedding length. You see that there are not too much of differences between regular concrete and recycle aggregate concrete. So after all proving this concept, the first actual application was done in the construction of a house. We applied it into the footing and to the concrete wall. And the first application was in 2013. Since then, actually, OK Builders Supplies Limited, with the company whom we are working with, they're supplying this ready mix green concrete. They are supplying it, marketing it as a green concrete into the valley. They have six different plants. And you can go up to 50%. That was their target. Then the question was, how about we use even 100% replacement and see how does it work? Then we did further work and we also proved that, yeah, even with 100%, there will be definitely challenges. Sometimes the durability might be affected, but CG of Kelowna wanted to actually help us, saying like they would like to implement those even up to 100% into their sidewalk. And they said they wanted to open the avenue for us to see actually in the field how they are performing. So this was done in October 2014. And this year, after a year, we have done. So here we actually used five different mixes. One is control concrete, 0% replacement, 30%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. So with different replacements, after one year, what we did, we did core cutting test, and we also did smith hammer test. And we found that all of them, our target strength for this particular mix was only 32 MPA. But now, after testing, we see that even the 100% RC replacement, they show 45 MPA strength which is excellent. Then, actually, another question came. OK, so you prove that, OK, if you are replacing aggregate, even with 100% in terms of strength-wise and long-term durability-wise, it is performing well. Now, the question is, how many times, say, for example, once we build a structure with RCA, eventually they will surpass their service life? Then the question is, can we recycle them again? So that's then the first generation, second generation, how about third generation? So we wanted to understand actually how many times we could recycle them, but we only did up to three generations. So this is what it is showing. That is first generation, and then we build structure, and then again after service life is gone, you again demolish them and use 100% RCA, and then again you demolish them and produce third generation concrete. So this is the concrete operation that we have done. So mostly those were beams and cylinders that we have cast, so not actual structure. And after 56 days, we crushed them okay, and produced those second generation, third generation aggregate. And again, we had to make sure that they are within the gradation limits to have the optimum packing density. And these are the aggregate properties. As expected, you know that specific gravity will be gradually reduced, and your water absorption capacity will gradually increase, as well as this moisture content will gradually increase. And with RCA, first generation, second generation, third generation, Gradually, your slump will be slightly affected, not significantly. And as expected, your ER content will be increasing compared to controlled concrete. And this is showing the strength development. The first generation, we are talking about 100% replacement. Obviously, the strength development is not as good as the control. But after 56 days, we could achieve 35 MPA for both first generation, second generation. But if you look into the third generation, you see that it took quite some time, because after 56 days, they did not achieve the 35 MPA target strength. But after 120 days, when we tested, they actually way surpassed the target strength. And these are the stress strain curve for the first generation, second generation, third generation. And as expected, as we have seen, as you increase the replacement level, it becomes a little softer. Same is true for this one as well. These are the results, model of elasticity and this train at peak stress. For this, we only did the free store durability test for this. And all of them show very good performance. In terms of restore durability, there should not be any problem.
We have been working with OK Builder Supplies Limited. They are ready mix concrete companies, so they have introduced it into the market. But again, not the first generation, second generation. They are not introducing 100%. They are a little conservative. They would like to supply 50%. But if the contractors or builders sign an agreement saying we'd like to use 100%, but the risk is on their own, they can supply 100%. There is no problem for them. But for 50%, you can get it. And now we are working with some precast companies because of that, as I said, locally, it's being challenged for them to get good quality aggregate at cheaper price. So precast companies are very interested to utilize this RCA. And with that, I'd conclude that, yes, RCA has very good potentials, even if you are thinking about recycling them over and over again. But so far, we have tested up to third generation. So people, hopefully, in the future, will be doing a few more generations. But again, when we are doing different generations, we not necessarily use 100%. We might use, you know, 30%, 40%. And if you, again, recycle them, there should not be any problem, because we have seen with 100% replacement, they were giving you adequate strength. And in terms of durability, they perform also well. So definitely, recycled aggregate concrete has good potential both in ready mix and precast concrete com industries. With that, I would like to acknowledge my undergraduate and graduate students who have done all of the work, and I'm taking the credit for them. <laughs> and I'd like to acknowledge these funding organizations and cities and industries. Thank you. One thing I wanted to ask is, was all this aggregate and the concrete, was it known? where the aggregate came from in the first place, or was it a random source? Because a lot of recycled aggregate is random. This is very important, actually. So initially, when we started this test, we started using aggregates from the landfill, and we come up with you know results that don't match. So the industry people, what they did was, it's very important to know the parent concrete the source, where it is coming from. You have to ensure the quality of the parent concrete. If you don't know the quality, then you are not going to achieve this kind of result. So the way the industry people do, say for example, a bridge has to be demolished, they go and buy out this whole structure and they demolish it so that they know ahead of time, like what is the quality of the parent concrete. That's how they ensure the quality. Otherwise, if you just get it from the landfill, still you can do that, but you have to make sure that the quality of this aggregate is good. Another question. Continuing on that, do you foresee it being an issue if, say, you have a second generation or third generation building, then demolished, and trying to figure out the source then of the multiple parents' concretes to be reused for then another generation? Let's say that we have a structure here and yes. it was a second generation okay. of concrete. Do you foresee it necessary to track whether this was a brand new concrete or okay. that second generation for yeah, its use? I think if you can know, but I think it will be difficult to learn. For first generation, second generation, I think the industry people are not going to use 100% replacement at this point. So if you are going for partial replacement, I think without even tracking, and also if you know the structure, before demolishing, you'll be able to test the strength as well, right? Then you already have some ensuring some quality. So I think in that case, it should not be a problem. But if you're talking about 100% replacement, then definitely I think it's a good idea to know and track it. Because when you're talking about third generation, you might not expect the strength development as the way it will be for other generations, yes. Thank you. We saw a general trend that decreased in quality of your concrete mm -hmm. throughout the generations. Right. If you were to add natural aggregate back into the, like a third generation or fourth generation, would you see an increase in those properties? So as you, over time throughout these generations, you know, you mm -hmm. don't degrade to so far, you can supplement it with natural aggregates again to kind of raise up your quality of concrete? Yes, for sure. Like if you are partially replacing with the third generation, if you have natural aggregate, I think your strength development, the way you have seen, might improve. Yeah, and might perform better. Yeah. What does a second or third generation recycled aggregate concrete look like under a microscope? Because that's how you're going to know. Yes. Are yes. So will, you, will you be able to Yes, actually, you can. We have the results. In our publication, we have those microscopic photos presented. So you can see some differences, for sure, yeah?